right. Now we are going to go for the first time to, well, it's not going to be a scheduled series. I call it bottom of the list. And what I love about elections and the great thing about democracy is that people take part. And for the B contest, there's got to be winners and there's got to be losers. It's the way the world works, isn't it? And every election, I am amazed because far more people, of course, don't get into Parliament than do get into Parliament. Far more candidates fall by the wayside than achieve the giddying heights of 160 grand a year in a, you know, a cupboard at Parliament under the stairs uh, to be cannon fodder for one of the main parties. So I love underdogs. I love people who participate. It's what makes democracy work. And there's the bottom of the list, isn't it? They're the people who are down there just doing the grunt work, making up the numbers for any political party. So we're going to highlight um, a number of those during the next few weeks as we run up to the election. And the first the first bottom of the list off the block is an ACT candidate. His name is Neil Christensen. And he is standing as a candidate in Port Waikato. Uh, and if you've been to Port Waikato, with, with what, southwest or west of Auckland, I've actually been out there for a couple of weddings. It's a wild place to have a party, and it's a pretty rugged uh, place. Neil Christensen, well, let's meet him. Let's get him on the line. Well, he's, he's on by video link. Neil, how are you? Good. Good, thanks, Sean. Good. All good right, to, you are the Port uh, Waikato you, candidate for ACT. Yeah, what number are you on their list? I think I'm 34. Keeps changing, but I think <laughs> yeah, I'm 34. Because people ahead of you keep on having to resign because they're nutbars and they use the Nazi word and here you are, you're just sitting there obviously crawling your way to the top by attrition, moving up the list. Um, Neil, I'll be honest, the reason I'm talking to you is David, I was having uh, a chat with David Seymour, not on air at some stage, and he said, geez, I like our candidates, you've got to meet this guy, Neil Christensen. He's what politics is all about. So you actually come with a personal endorsement from your leader. I'm going to make another observation. You're on video link, and behind you, well, you I've have a little... Yeah, you look good. I've got a little screen in the corner so hopefully yeah. that's what the viewers are yeah yeah no it yeah. looks it looks good and you've actually bothered to put a party poster up behind you you have dressed your set do you know how many politicians i talk to on the video link who cannot be asked even doing that so i think that's a plus you're there good. yeah all yes. right you're also yeah. i can tell by your little study that you're a football supporter I am a long-suffering supporter of, of, as you can see, Newcastle United. <laughs> All right. Okay. And that I don't know about, and I'm just going to leave that. I just know that, that Ben looked slightly derogatory when he saw that in your set. But, Neil, you're from England, and there's some other amazing stuff about you. What do you do for a job, or did you do for a job, Neil? <sighs> Well, my wife would prefer the last, the latter one, but uh, I am this country's only re registered specialist poultry uh, veterinarian. There are a few others look at chickens, but I'm the only registered specialist poultry veterinarian in New Zealand. <laughs> okay, a and I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to take your word for that. <laughs> <laughs> How did you become a frontline chicken hacker? Okay. <laughs> Chicken botherer, egg examiner. No. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> what drew you to be a vet specialising in poultry? Well, the two, that's two questions. But uh, when I went to, you said I was from England, but I mm. grew up in various parts of Africa, not, in, ah, okay. not much in England. And when I, uh, after I'd qualified at Honest to Put, I went to... Uh, I travelled to England and having worked in a very high class practice in in South Africa, I, I was quite shocked at the standard of um, very low expectations of new graduates in the United Kingdom. So uh, I'd always had a vague interest in poultry. So I, uh, when one, and they'd had a tradition of private poultry veterinarians in the UK, they always have and they still do. And when one of them asked 
advertised for an assistant. I um, applied and I travelled down and he gave me the job before he'd interviewed the other candidates, I suspect, because I could start on Monday. But uh, And you thought, I'll and, give that a crack. More or less, yes. And when I, when I, after I'd been doing it for a few weeks, uh, the, the boss pushed off to Poland and I ended up sort of advising the chief veterinary officer on the, the first outbreak we had in the UK of a disease called um, Dirtsy's disease or goose parvo virus. And uh, I realised that I wasn't going to learn this trade in a short space of time and I carried on. And what I liked about it was the very, very short period between investigation of of new diseases and there's plenty coming or, uh, or plenty came mm. and they still do and uh the when that information became part of general practice it was a very short chain and and that that appealed to me and it's just carried on since then all right so you clawed your way you you clawed your way to the top of the roost in poultry veterinary practice in new zealand do you keep chickens now neil i'm not allowed to i can't because of my clients i they have very high biosecurity requirements and keeping a few (laughs) chickens around the place is not a not a uh, not a possibility okay in 2017 you got the dennis o'meara award for your contributions to the egg industry correct yeah basically when i set up my own practice in 2000 2001 the, the there were two things that were going on at the time one was the sort of first um, appearances of the free range the free range egg industry yeah and i reckon that was going to need need a little bit of help uh, servicing and that has proved that has yeah. proved to be the case and the other was the appearance of the animal products act and the sort of bringing of the egg industry into the uh, ambit of bureaucracy which it uh, had um, had escaped up to then right and uh, there were a lot of people offering services on risk management programs and that sort of thing and i thought it would be useful if so act- somebody in the process actually knew something about chickens and it sort of carried on from there all right well look i I just i think you're second to none in poultry veterinary practice in new zealand how on earth did you get into politics how do you go from i don't know um chickens to to politics in the act party how did that happen and how did you become a candidate neil i've always been interested in i've always been interested in in the in the political process and i reckon i keep a a fair fair knowledge we uh, we talk about I've always talked about it at home and I I've had an, an interest in in the sort of development of constitu- constitutional developments over uh, as um, various colonies and yeah. dominions have advanced towards uh, yeah. s- um, self rule and and yeah and th- that's one side of it is the sort of um, highbrow stuff yeah and the other is is uh, just is a um, <clears throat> as it, really it's just a, a frustration with the with the effects of the of bureaucracy on on our economic uh, activity on our economic. So you're a, a small government guy. That's your fundamental. That's your underlying political philosophy. Small government, Very much so. Freedom. From yeah. regulation and, and free market, one presumes, which puts you perfectly in act. So act is definitely yeah. uh, the party. Uh, yeah, I've been a for supporter you. since the Association of Consumers and, and Taxpayers. Taxpayers. Okay, so you're a long time guy. Okay, how does act do in Port Waikato? I, well, from my uh, polling, around, certainly around the business community, we we'll do extremely well. I think there are a lot of sort of Closet Act supporters who will come out on the 14th of October. Yeah, okay. How, what sort of campaign is it there? Is it vicious? Is it nasty? Have you knocked on a door? Or do you just go down the pub and have a yarn? Oh, I do a bit of door knocking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who's it's, the incumbent uh, but there? It's all, to do with, it's all to do with the party vote, Sean. We're yeah. Looking, if you have a look at the Act hoardings around the place yeah you won't apart from brooke and david you won't see any names you won't see yeah any, you're going party places. vote which is very wise the party vote yeah and i understand that the party has done research which shows that the better a candidate does in the electorate vote in an electorate the worse 
the party does in the party vote in that election. Yeah, because so, what uh, happens is you people say, oh, I've given him my vote, I can now spend my party vote somewhere else. And, of course, it's a complete yeah. falsity. So well done. You're, yes, you're well focused what, on this. And that, is, and that is central to my campaign, and I yeah. think all the other um, uh, candidates, whether they're bottom of the list or in the middle of the list, and, uh, yeah. you know, I have... Um, I've developed mates with various people in in the party, and I've got my ideas as to who who targets as to who I'd like to 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 get in. Yeah. Okay, so you're actually thinking about the people ahead of you you'd like to see in. Well, Neil, if people keep That's on right, saying yeah. bad things about Nazis and the Holocaust, you might find yourself at number five uh, before very bloody long. Um, look, the other thing I want to ask you. And look, it sounds to me like you've got a really good handle on the reality of your political role. You are there to get party vote. Um, you're not there yeah. to, 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 you know, be the Prime Minister one day. It's bloody refreshing, actually. Um, but what do you get out of it? Because you're not going to get a job, I presume. You're not going to get some position on the total ISA race. Yeah, maybe you, the poultry, you, maybe you get an appointment to the poultry board. board. Maybe you become Sorry? a top... Maybe you get an appointment to the poultry board or something out of this. Maybe there is a bit of no, payoff. The poultry, the poultry board was abandoned 30 years ago. Oh, okay, I didn't see. I'm uh, so behind the times. The statutory board, they're all supported by the by the producers. But I don't know. I am uh, i don't know. They obviously didn't tell you how old I was, but... Uh, how old I'm, are you? It's something how old are I you, Neil? Of, I didn't want to be ageist. I'll be, I'm, I'll be 72 in a couple of... Oh, in, you're a spring chicken. See the puns that I'm just I'm just well through. by current standards, Sean. Yeah, Biden and uh, <laughs> Biden and uh, and Trump and uh, well even Winston Peters is yeah. older than me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, is there anything negative or nasty about being a candidate? Are you getting trolled on social media? That's presuming you are on I social media. On so I don't go on social media, Sean. So you don't have a Twitter account, right? No. Instagram? No. TikTok? No. Face Facebook? You hear of Facebook? I tried, but with uh, <laughs> I've got a bit on. You might find a bit about chicken worms on 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 the AVVET Facebook. Account. So no you Facebook. You it. literally. Do you have a mobile phone, Neil? I do. Yes. Or do you use it often? I. Oh, well, yes, look, you must yeah. be technical. You've got a, a camera on your computer and I can see you. you're doing it better than a lot of people. Um, oh, thank you. You know, <laughs> um, you so you haven't been right trolled. Thing. You haven't had any nasty encounters. No one's tried to cancel oh, we you. Had a, no, the only, well, the, we, some of the people who I've um, spoken to have sort of um, said that... Uh, uh, Warned, warned, and said, "Oh, there were very, um, the country was being taken over by by Vanguard and uh, and Black Rock, Rock and, yeah, and and, and, Dav and Davos, and that uh, Jacinda Ardern was a Freemason, but yeah, <laughs> and we had to be careful. No, that's Liz Gunn. She's the Freemason. Um, look, you seem that's, very um, relaxed, Neil." You seem Sorry? very relaxed. You seem very relaxed about the whole political career thing. Well, I, I'm not having a political career. I'm I'm sort of having a a, a six week um, a, a six week um, sort of um, yeah, get out and put All my right. money where my mouth. Well, is. you never know. You never oh, know oh. how how things are going to unfold. As I say. People above you on the list seem to be resigning uh, with incredible regularity. You may find yourself in the hallowed halls of power in, in, in you know, seven or eight weeks. Neil, I, I want to say thank you, uh, not as an act supporter or anything. I just want to say thank you because democracy requires people who aren't going to win to contest and to show up and do something, and you're one of those people who does it. So from... A whole lot of New Zealanders, thank you for taking part, um, even though, you, you know, you, 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 I hate to say it, but you're not going to be offended by it. You're not going to win. You haven't got a snowball's chance, have you? 
Act would need to get, to, I think, 31%, 32% of the vote before I was in any danger of uh, requiring a flat right. in Wellington. So hey, I just want a final I'm, question. <laughs> if that did happen or some time, would you actually be a bit peeved off if you had to go to Parliament and be a politician? Uh, my wife has threatened to divorce me. Okay, well, that's, you need to have a think about that. That's all I'm saying. Um, thank I, you so much know. for taking your time. We may, Neil, if you don't mind, I might come back to you before the election and just see how you're going. Particularly yeah, if the polls, do. you know, please, particularly please, if you're threatening. Do. We, can, we can talk about co-governance and uh, and the way that, uh, you know, the government, the current, uh, the, the expenditure of the current government is, uh, is squeezing the, uh, the, well, the squeezed middles. A lot of it comes yeah. from the amount of money that the government spends, and uh, and it means that the Reserve Bank has to squeeze the rest of us harder mm. to bring inflation under control. Yeah, I and, hear. Uh, sure, I'm old. I'm old enough to have to have seen the effects of the 1970s, eight, eight, early 80s inflation on my early mm. pay packets and. And if we're going to have to endure a little bit of pain, then I can assure you it, and your list, listeners, mm. viewers, that it is uh, it's it is worthwhile. All right. Hey, thank you so much, Neil. Really nice meeting you. And good luck. Thank you very much. Good luck for the campaign. Thank that you. is Neil Christian. Oh, there's just one, yeah. uh, one oh. final political message. From uh, okay. Message. And, that, and I'll just read it out. Hold it up. Just hold it back up there. Because not everyone is watching as well as listening. Give bureaucracy a haircut, not a blue rinse. Party vote act. Nice stuff. Good on you. Very on message, Neil. Neil Christensen, who is, well, it doesn't matter where he is. He's not 30, if they get 31% of the vote, he's in. He's ex um, candidate in Port Waikato. And we hope to find a similar, we hope to find the Neil Christensen of the Labour Party the National Party, the New Zealand First Party, the Green Party, and we just hope they come on and talk about it. So there's Neil. He's not going to bother the counters, is he, on election day? But he's in, and he's in, and, and, and everyone's got a backstory. He's New, Zealand own, New Zealand's only specialist poultry vet, and he's chosen to go with ACT. Isn't that amazing?